Reactive Training Systems. What's up? This is Jim Ellie with Reactive Training Systems. And today I want to talk about a few key things and answer a few of the questions that we recently had on our RTS Instagram, where I asked, or we asked, what do you want to know more about? What would you like a video on? And a lot of people ask more specific ways to utilize emerging strategies. So today's video is gonna be hopefully a very specific way that I've used the emerging strategies framework to help deal with a specific client in a specific situation. Here's the situation. <laughs> I have been working with the lifter for now for about three years. And probably she's one of the most passionate lifters that I've ever worked with. And most of the lifters I work with are very passionate, but I mean, we're doing the video on her, so we might as well, you know, boost her up. Seriously though, she's probably one of the most passionate lifters I know. And the first year and a half we've worked together, everything was going really well until one day when she was deadlifting. And everything was going okay. And then on the last set, heaviest set, she dropped the bar pretty hard and bam. Something happened in her knuckle. Something felt like it exploded in her knuckle. And it might not seem like it, but our hands are really important for squatting, benching, and deadlifting. We can't really do a lot of movements if we can't use our hands. So her entire hand was in so much pain that she could not even hold a teaspoon for two weeks without experiencing excruciating amounts of pain. So what did we do? Well, she went to the doctor, of course. They figured out what was happening. And it turns out she has calcific tendinopathy, which means that she produces calcium deposits in her tendons instead of her bones, at least in certain situations. Especially, it's not as common in their tendons, especially not in the hand. So we had to take some, a few weeks off, I think a month or two off, until she was ready to come back and train. Because of course, when things are going really well, and you have this experience, this painful experience, that takes everything away from you, just sweeps it onto the rug, that's very difficult to handle and sometimes you do need to take a break to figure out what the next step is. So she took a break, she talked to her doctors, they talked about surgery, and turns out surgery was not an option. She just needed to take some rest, continue to ice, do some physical therapy for her hand, and when she was ready to come back to me, she said, hey, I'm ready, I wanna keep squatting, benching, and deadlifting, I wanna figure out a way I want you to figure out a way for me to continue competing, even if that means I don't deadlift every single week. Squatting and benching were okay. Emerging strategies comes into this problem solving process because it is founded on this idea that you take the information that you're receiving from the individuals that you're working with, or if you're working with yourself, and you make the next best decision that allows them to progress for the future. So that's taking all the past information you have about the lifter, but as well as all the information you've ever learned about for lifting strategies in general. So that's taking information from other coaches and, and learning and investing and spending a lot of time learning different programming strategies that could work for individuals and then using those specific strategies in situations that require them. I like to think of that as expanding your toolkit meaning that you have a bunch of tools that you can grab. One day you take out a wrench, one day you take out a hammer, one take, day you take out a jigsaw, and you go to work, right? Well, in this situation, we didn't need something too crazy. We actually went very low on the specificity. We couldn't deadlift every week. She wasn't ready to. She wasn't ready to handle that much deadlifting because of how recent the painful experience was. Instead, we used a lot of supplemental and assistance work so that we could cross our fingers and hope that on competition day, by the way, she peaks every four weeks, so she did three weeks of lower specificity, supplemental and assistance lifts, and then we kind of cross our fingers and hope that the strategy that we use would produce a positive response for her deadlift. And that's what we did. For about five blocks in a row, we just 
did glute ham raises, good mornings, pin good mornings, wide stance good mornings, close stance good mornings, safety bar squat good mornings, glute ham raises, glute hip thrusts. Basically anything that trained her posterior chain, we used. We used a combination of assistance lifts, meaning that it was higher on the uh, intensity level, higher on the specificity, as high as you can get with a good morning. And we trained those pretty heavy. We were doing doubles at a nine, triples at nine. I think at one point we even did singles at an eight for good mornings, which for most people would not be a, a, a go-to strategy. But in this situation, the process is to take the information that I had, which was she wasn't gonna deadlift every week, she wasn't ready. She was okay with every four weeks, but we needed together to figure out a situation where she was both excited, willing to adhere, and also from a scientific approach would hopefully, re would hopefully allow her to respond. And by respond, I mean her deadlift improved. And turns out this situation, this strategy worked. She was able to improve her deadlift almost every single block. Every competition that we used with this strategy, by the way, most times that meant she only deadlifted on the game, on the game day. So she was going three weeks of not deadlifting at all. And then we make some form of collaborative meat card for her deadlift and cross her fingers that she was okay with it. And the other thing is she was visualizing deadlifting a lot. So that helped her to figure out what she was capable of. But the point is the story, the reason why I'm telling you this is because emerging strategies as a process is so context dependent that I could not explain every possible scenario. It's a way of thinking about yourself, about your lifters, that allows you to make the best decisions using analyzation of data from the past and taking the information that you have and your experiences as a coach with other lifters and with the peer group that you have to make decisions for individuals that will hopefully provide the most positive response in the future. And then learning from your decision, sticking with your decision and st until you actually see the response dial out. If it's no longer working, you change your strategy to continue that response and continue her, the, the positive response for the future. I hope this case study was helpful. I hope this helps to, you to think about training in a way that is opening your mind and gives you more options. I know that you've read a lot about training. I bet if you're watching this video, you've listened and heard and read so many articles and videos that were talking about the best way to squat, the best way to deadlift, the best way to improve your bench. Well, the thing is, there's a lot of best ways. There's a lot of best ways for individuals. There's a lot of best ways for situations, okay? So take in all those best ways, understand that every individual is a complex organism and what they respond best to right now isn't necessarily what they'll respond best to next year. If you can take that information with you, I guarantee you'll be a much better coach and a much better lifter. Thanks for watching this video and I will talk to you guys next time. Reactive Training Systems.